Chapter 4. Seven little sailor boys chopping up sticks. One chopped himself in halves, and then there were six. Rogers is a first-class butler. I'll say that for him. Wife was a pretty good cook, too. Too bad we only got one meal out of her. Ladies and gentlemen, back to the business at hand. I'm going to ask Mr. Narakot to continue his investigation. But he's the last one who saw the general alive. The last one who is willing to admit to it. Mr. Narakot. Cause of death, Doctor? The back of his skull was crushed with a blunt instrument. Could the general's death have been an accident? There were multiple wounds. Unless you repeatedly slam the back of his head against a rock, I think we can safely rule out accident and suicide. Which confirms what we've all come to suspect. The first two deaths were undoubtedly murder as well. I concur. Time of death? Only a few minutes before he was found. Not more than 30 at the outside. Do you have an alibi for that period of time? Why, the judge and I were playing snooker. Forgive me, Doctor, but you went up to your room, if you'll recall. Oh, of course, of course. For a moment or two only. That is all for now, Dr. Armstrong. Where were you during the half hour in question? I won't deny that Lombard and I had split up by then. I was just wondering, collecting my thoughts, you might say. How did you come to find the body? I'd seen the old gent down on the beach when we searched the island. He seemed pretty confused. I saw the storm coming on, knew it was almost supper time. Thought I'd collect him. See anyone else on the beach? No, no one. See anything of a murder weapon? Plenty of solid Devon rocks about. I didn't see any blood, but the rock could have just been tossed in the surf. One said he'd stay right there, and then there were seven. Thank you, Miss Claythorne, for again calling our attention to the rhyme. It is significant without a doubt. We have one dead from having choked himself. Another overslept herself. Now a third wishes to remain in Devon, and his wish is granted to him in a most final manner. That'll do, Mr. Bloor. Where were you during the half hour in question? Up on Ship Rock, where we spoke. The entire time? Yes, until the wind came up. I thought I should get back before the storm. You could see the beach from where you were? I spent most of my time on the far side of the summit. But I did move to a position above the beach once or twice. I saw you talking to the general from there. Yes. He seemed to know he was going to die. Could that be because you were swinging a rock at his head? He was quite alive when I left him. Did you see anyone else on the beach? Yes, I saw Philip. Mr. Lombard and Mr. Bloor walking up the path from the beach. But that was earlier. Anything else you can add, Vera? No, nothing, I'm afraid. Much obliged for your assistance, Miss Claythorne. Seven little sailor boys. Accurate. Where were you during the half hour in question? Mostly in the kitchen, sir, preparing dinner. I also washed dishes, swept the patio, where I saw Miss Brent knitting. Quietly cleaned the game room so as not to disturb the doctor and the judge. Made the beds and chopped some more firewood. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. Where were you during the half hour in question? After Bloor wandered off, I went back to that ruined fishing village. It seemed the most likely place for Owen to be hiding. When the weather closed in, I made a dash back here to the house. Find any trace of Owen or anyone else on the island apart from us? No, I wish I had. Anything else you'd like to add? Not at the moment. Do you think I should use the parachute to try and reach the mainland? Yes, I think I'll feel a lot safer with you gone. Could you assist me with your plan? I handed it to you on a platter, Narakot. Surely others can help you with the menial work. I will pilot it for you, however. That better be my job. As you like. Good evening, Mr. Lombard. Where were you during the half hour in question? On the front patio, knitting. I'd been there since just after breakfast. You spoke with me there. We saw her too after we'd searched the house. 
Thank you, Mr. Lombard, but I feel bound to add that there were many stretches of time throughout the morning when I was quite alone. Who else did you see? Almost everyone at one time or another, I should think. I saw the General walk off along that path towards Ship Rock. A minute or two later, Miss Claythorne headed in the same direction. He went to the beach. I climbed the rock. Rogers was also near me for a time, sweeping away some of the debris on the patio from last night's storm. Very tidy chap, that Rogers. I don't know if it's important, but I heard someone up above me near the telescope. But I don't know who it was. Thank you, Miss Brett. Where were you during the half hour in question? After the doctor and I finished our game, I had a look around the library. I'm surprised to say I found one of my own books in there. I wonder which of the previous inhabitants of the island it belonged to. Why not Owen? My dear Mr. Bloor, it was perfectly clear to me some time ago, and after your search you must realize now as well, Mr. Owen is on this island. He, or she, is one of us. No, no, no. Young lady, this is no time for refusing to look facts in the face. We are all in grave danger. One of us is Mr. Unknown, and Mr. Unknown has no good planned for us. I'm a well-known professional man. The mere idea that I could be suspected of murder is preposterous. I too am a well-known person. That, my dear sir, proves less than nothing. Doctors have gone mad before now. Judges have gone mad. So have policemen. What do you think we should do, Judge? Be on our guard, especially at night. I'd suggest prayer. I'm not adverse to prayer, Miss Brent, but I would supplement it with a locked door. Anything else you'd like to add? Yes. I've been asked why I trust you, Mr. Narricott, our odd man out to lead these informal inquiries of ours. It is very simple. It is clear to me that Mr. Owen had not planned on you stopping here on the island with us. Unless Bloor is Owen. Stow that talk, Doctor. An attempt has been made on your life. So he says. Right now, there is no one I trust more to get us out of this predicament. Brittily spoken, Judge. I know you'll pardon me for saying this, but if you are Owen, you might want a bumbling amateur on the case more than a professional like Bloor. I would hope we all answer Mr. Bloor's questions with equal candor. Too right. I've got a plan to get off the island. Can you help me build a parachute? I'm not as strong as I once was, I'm afraid. Perhaps some of the others can assist you. I appreciate your candor, Judge. If I may sum up, we're trapped on this island at least till Monday morning. One of us is most certainly a homicidal maniac. None of us has a clear alibi for the time in which the General met his death. Have I forgotten anything? Yes, it's storming again. This might be a good time to explore the house unhindered. Our Lord moves in far more mysterious ways than you can ever hope to uncover. Perhaps, Miss Brent, but I'm still willing to have a go. Who do you think the killer is? Very well. I'll humor you. Mr. Bloor seems the most likely suspect. Why? He's already admitted he's checked up on all of us as part of his supposed job for Mr. Owen. People with secrets, especially those with secrets concerning possible murders, don't make their complicity common knowledge. It would take a man like Mr. Bloor to ferret it out. Any idea who Mr. Owen's next victim might be? Forgive me, but I doubt he takes you very seriously. That leaves the judge as the biggest threat. Yes, if I were the killer, I'd go after the judge next. Thank you, Miss Brent. It's got power, but it still doesn't seem to be working. It needs something to improve the reception. Let's hope that holds. There. 
Perhaps some light music will help soothe Vera's nerves. Dr. Armstrong? What? What? I must say, I don't think much of this barging in on people when they... when they are... Ministering to the sick? I don't find that amusing, sir. Not in the slightest. Dr. Armstrong, if it will relieve your mind at all, I don't think there's anyone alive on this island who truly believes you are a teetotaler. Somehow that doesn't relieve my mind one bit. You protest too much, then eye the drinks tray as if it were mana from heaven. You sneak off to your room to freshen up every chance you get. All right, Mr. Narakot, you've made your point. What do you want? Who do you think is the killer? Miss Brent. Knitting. Always knitting. Like Madame Defarge in A Tale of Two Cities. Madame Defarge knitted the names of those destined for the guillotine. Revenge, sir. It seems an apt analogy. Also, I don't much like Bible thumpers. Have you any proof? Proof, sir, is for the police. I have a doctor's instincts. My instinct tells me that anyone that self-righteous and repressed might easily turn to murder. What did she call Mrs. Rogers' death? An act of God. A woman like that could easily cast herself in the role of God's sword. Any idea who Mr. Owen's next victim might be? No idea, but I assure you I plan to see it as not I. Better lock your door then, Doctor. I walked right in. Good evening, Doctor. Excellent, like hand in glove. Come here, Mr. Narakot. Don't be shy, it's only me. Communing with the dead, Judge. In a way, the law is much like necromancy. We delve, the dead give up their secrets. What has General Mackenzie told you? Notice the picture of his dear wife. Leslie, I believe he said her name was. The glass has been smashed, perhaps by the same blunt object that did for the General. But why? If we knew that, we might be further along in our inquiries, don't you think? If I had to hazard a guess, I'd say it has something to do with love. It's one of the prime motives, you know. Greed, revenge, and love. Love has killed as many as either of the other two. Who do you think the killer is? Lombard is a man used to killing. He freely admits it. It could be a classic double bluff, plead that he is guilty so that we assume his innocence. 
is used to taking matters into his own hands. If he suddenly decided for whatever reason that ten people had to die, I doubt he'd sit still for natural causes. Any idea who Mr. Owen's next victim will be? If I were you, Mr. Narricot, I'd watch my own back. Bloor is all bluster. I'm past my prime. Armstrong is easily manipulated. Miss Brent's Bible provides all her answers. Miss Claythorne is like a deer caught in onrushing headlights, which is why I suppose you and Mr. Lombard find her so attractive. You don't miss much, do you? I miss nothing. And if it doesn't seem too egotistical of me, I can't help feeling that Mr. Owen knows that. Even intended this mystery for me. Why, I can't say, but he didn't count on you, my young friend. I'm hoping that together we may yet thwart him. Good evening, Judge. Although I don't condone smoking, who am I to judge a judge? Are you sure you can't tell me what you were hinting at about Marsden's politics? Marsden's family was furious with him for becoming involved with a London group enamored of Mr. Hitler's expansionist policies. It's always sad when the younger son of a great family goes astray. I appreciate your candor, Judge. What have we here? Hmm, definitely a legal document. Could be a marriage license, birth certificate, death certificate, perhaps even a will. How goes the investigation, Bloor? Better than yours, I'll wager. Who do you think the killer is? Rogers, of course. In my experience, it's almost always a servant. And he's the only one still standing. Rogers' background seems like an open book. He may have had a motive for killing his wife, but why kill the others? The judge thinks it's a maniac. That's motive enough. Even maniacs have motives that make sense to them. Perhaps. Not being one, I wouldn't have an opinion about that. Any idea who Mr. Owen's next victim will be? I'm the biggest threat to him. A professional investigator? He's lucky he's gone undetected this long. I'm closing in and he knows it. Good evening, Mr. Bloor. Mr. Narricot, you startled me. Sorry, Rogers. Rogers, what are you doing? I've already locked the door between the kitchen and the dining room. No one will be able to play tricks with those sailor boy figures tonight at any rate. Who do you think the killer is? Miss Claythorne, of course. Why? She brought the rhyme to our attention. She seems innocent of her crime. I think it's just a blind. Aren't you innocent of your crime? We're not talking of me, sir. And she's the least likely suspect with drunken doctors, wily judges, religious zealots, cowardly hunters, and you, whatever you are, running about. Usually it's the butler who's the least likely suspect. Not where I come from, sir. Any idea who Mr. Owen's next victim might be? Miss Claythorne. But you said she was Mr. Owen. Did I? Then Miss Brent. Why? There's something terrible about her. There's hard steel under those frumpy clothes. Mark my words. Owen would do well to polish her off before she gets her knitting needles into him. Good evening, Mr. Rogers.
candy, ice cream. The next feature will be beginning shortly. Mr. Narakot. We can't blame him for snooping about in the dark, Vera dear. I'm afraid it's in his nature. Were you looking for us? For you, certainly. Who do you think the killer is? I'd feel uncomfortable answering that. Please try. Our lives may depend on it. I'm surprised you value my opinion so highly. But if I were to guess, I'd be forced to say Dr. Armstrong. Why? Well, who else has the opportunity to cover his tracks so well? I, for one, can't dispute him if he says potassium cyanide has been used. And two of the three victims have been poisoned. Surely that points to a doctor. Some might say to a woman. Really? Any idea who Mr. Owen's next victim might be? Well, if I were Mr. Owen, I'd kill Philip. Thank you so much. He's obviously the most experienced at getting out of tight places. Wouldn't that make him the most dangerous to Mr. Owen? Much obliged for your assistance, Miss Claythorne. And who do you think the killer is? Wargrave. The recording called us prisoners at the bar. The whole plot smacks of a sense of criminal justice gone mad. From what Vera tells me, he let that Seton chap swing just for the jollies. Wargrave's my bet. No doubt about it. Any idea who Mr. Owen's next victim might be? Well, if I were crass and selfish, come to think of it I am, I'd pick you. I don't much like you, Narakot. <gasps> Philip? The swine has his sights on you, Vera, if you'd only see it. He doesn't deserve you. That'll be all, Mr. Lombard. Everyone should be asleep by now. Those still awake must certainly be up to no good. Present company excluded, of course. It's locked fast. Tightly locked. No, Philip, you cannot come in. My intentions are strictly honorable. I'm here to protect you. It might be a good idea for him to stay. Patrick? Are you here to protect me as well? If necessary. Oh, that's very gallant of you. If true. I only have your best interests at heart. I too. Gentlemen, I appreciate your concern, but I will be quite all right. I intend to put furniture in front of all my doors. We all need sleep, I think. Please excuse me. A piece of advice, Narakot. You may get the killer, but I intend to get the girl. And if she's the killer? Well, that will make for some rather interesting evenings at home, won't it? I think it's time for me to get some sleep. I can barely keep my eyes open. We're all a bit late this morning. I slept the clock round. A sign of a clear conscience, Doctor? Or just a nightcap or two? Uncalled for, Judge. Totally uncalled for. No smell of coffee. The stove in the kitchen is cold. Where's breakfast? We were just wondering the same thing. Miss Brent isn't in her room. Has anyone else noticed the dining room is locked up tight? Rogers did that, so no more Sailor Boy figurines could be broken. Hmm. He seems to have got the cart before the horse, if you ask me. Kitchen door to the outside is locked as well. Perhaps he's chopping firewood for the stove. I confess I don't like it. Both Rogers and Miss Brent missing? Mr. Narakot, would you mind having a look around outside? Certainly. You don't mind if I tag along, I'm sure. Good morning, Mr. Narakot. I'm afraid the sea is as high as ever. 
I doubt we'll see a boat from the mainland today. Have you been wandering about the island alone, Miss Brent? Don't you realize that is an exceedingly foolish thing to do? I'm in no danger when I'm alone, Mr. Bloor. She doesn't get it at all. I'm sticking to you, Narricot. Let's find Rogers. Rogers? Limey, either he's a good five feet taller or... Cut clean in half. Dead, of course. Yes, we don't need Dr. Armstrong to tell us that. Or to fix the cause of death. Axe looks cleaned off. A tidy chap like Rogers would have approved. Dining room key, I expect. He was holding it. Rogers is now in his bedroom. 